It's been more than three weeks since New Brunswick's election, and the province is still in a state of political uncertainty. The incumbent Liberals with 21 seats and the PCs with 22 seats both say they're intending to rule. The People's Alliance won three seats and plans to informally support the PCs. The Green Party also took three seats, but hasn't really made public its next move. The leader says it depends on the Liberal government's throne speech on October 23rd. So where is the party leaning? Could New Brunswickers be heading back to the polls? Joining me now from Fredericton is the New Brunswick Green Party leader, David Kuhn. Hi, Mr. Kuhn. Great to see you. How are you? Uh, Mr. Kuhn, you were in talks with the Liberals to potentially support uh, their government, either through a coalition or a supply and confidence agreement. Why didn't that come about? What, why did it fall apart? Well, actually, we were in conversations with both the Liberals and the Conservatives. Uh, we never uh, talked about a coalition. That was uh, ruled out from the, uh, from the get-go. But we were talking initially about the possibility with both of them, about the possibility of a supply and a confidence and supply agreement, like was done in British Columbia. But the conditions just weren't there. Uh, in the end, once all the recounts were done, the Liberals didn't have the necessary numbers uh, to get the confidence of the House, and uh, the Conservatives weren't particularly interested in the agreement in the end. So with the Liberals, then, it was just a numbers issue? Well, certainly that was the, that was the key thing. Uh, we didn't want to be in, uh, in any way implicated in trying to encourage people across the floor. That just breeds more political cynicism. We've got enough of that. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've got to respect the situation we've got, which is why we've been encouraging the idea of cooperation once the legislature is up and running among all MLAs through our declaration of intent that we've got quite a few MLAs signed on to now. Explain to me what, what this declaration is. Well, we thought, what's, what, what can we do to show uh, the people in New Brunswick that actually we do want to do what they're asking us with this minority government, that is to actually collaborate and cooperate. So the declar declaration of intent is for individual MLAs to sign on based on uh, shared principles that really underlie the social contract or the foundation of New Brunswick around uh, indigenous rights, linguistic rights, uh, the right to a clean environment and the respect for uh, the authority of the Legislative Assembly. So it's going well so far. What does well mean? And I ask because uh, I understand that it's, it's, a, it's a declaration, as, as you say, of intent, but it's not binding. No, of course it's not binding, um, but the idea is for MLAs to indicate uh, their, their willingness to cooperate across party lines, to kind of blur those lines a little once the legislature is up and running, uh, and, uh, and work collaboratively to take on some of the big challenges uh, we have in New Brunswick. That's what people want, to, want us to do. Um, people are so done with the old sort of uh, backroom wielding power, ruling for four years politics. They've served up a table in this legislature for cooperation and that's what we're trying to uh, uh, lead with on this initiative. Is that realistic? And I ask because you, you just finished a campaign in which there were major lines of division between each of your parties. Well, it all depends on, on how things shake out um, with the throne speech, I guess, and uh, how well people are able to leave the campaign behind and get on with the work of governance. What do you need to hear in the throne speech to support it? Well, we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to weigh the uh, uh, throne speech based on its substance, um, on the practicality of actually uh, you know, implementing uh, and achieving the commitments in the throne speech, uh, uh, and we'll see. But of course, uh, again, uh, people need to understand there are 21 Liberals sitting on the government side when we get back to the legislature, and there are 28 uh, other MLAs sitting on the opposition side divided among three parties. So that's what it looks like. And somehow there's got to be a speaker, um, which is going to be our first hurdle. Yeah, let me ask you uh, about that before I get back to the throne speech. What is, I mean, nobody seems willing to, to put a speaker forward. That's right. Uh, so far, uh, all the leaders have indicated no one from their parties will be standing for nomination as speaker. And so that uh, puts the lieutenant governor in an interesting position. Um, Why are well, you unwilling? You just spoke about the spirit of cooperation and how people in New Brunswick don't want to see animosity in another election. Why wouldn't you put someone forward? Well, we're, we're just, for the first time, uh, a caucus of MLAs in the Legislative Assembly with three MLAs. Uh, so uh, if, if perhaps we'd been uh, a longer established party with MLAs uh, running many, uh, many years in the Legislative Assembly, that would be uh, possible. But with brand new MLAs who have never sat in the Legislative Assembly, uh, it's, uh, it's not a wise thing to do. 
But you are, I mean, you are stressing the, uh, and, I, and I, I take your point that, that you're all new, and of course, usually you'd like someone in, spe in the position of speaker who's been around for a while, but you are saying that, you know, the spirit of cooperation should guide everyone in the legislature as it resumes. Uh, nobody is willing to put forward a speaker. What does, that say, what does that say about your declaration, for example? Well, I think when it comes to the speaker, ultimately, uh, it does fall to the, uh, the, the premier uh, to find a speaker. And uh, so the le lieutenant governor, if, if, if no speaker uh, present themselves for, for nomination for election, then the lieutenant governor will have to have a conversation, I expect, uh, with the premier. Can I ask about, back to the throne speech and, and what you, you need to hear, especially on the issue of climate? Uh, and of course, I, I'm sure you realize what a controversial issue, issue it is right now between the provinces, many of the provinces and the federal government. Does Brian Gallant need to say that he supports the federal climate plan for, for your support? Well, it's of course not just one thing. We've got a lot of big challenges in uh, New Brunswick. Some of them have been aggravated by Brian Gallant's uh, uh, policies and initiatives over the last four years, um, both in terms of the deteriorating uh, access to health care in New Brunswick, uh, along with a, a variety of other important issues, and uh, not to least of which is, is uh, the failure to address uh, poverty uh, and climate change. So uh, there's a, a bunch of issues that, that we'll be looking at carefully to see whether or not they're represented in the throne speech and represented in a way that will make a difference in people's lives. On the issue, though, specifically of climate change, what do you need to hear from, from the Premier? Do you support the federal plan and do you want him to support it? So in New Brunswick, uh, we ha you know, of course, we have the federal plan, um, which I support. Um, but we also have had a provincial plan that uh, was never implemented. Uh, Brian Gallant uh, announced uh, two years ago with great, uh, with, with great uh, you know, fanfare with his entire cabinet, the provincial plan. Uh, uh, for New Brunswick, but uh, ha they never acted on it. So, you know, there's a, a real question of, um, of trust here. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks a lot, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you.